I love these days, especially because everything's kind of going in the right direction and we see everything going up and we're extremely happy. And today we get to talk about a little something that uh, ex-CEO and CEO of a lot of different companies, Elon Musk comes out and talks about payments are coming to X. And me personally, I've got my opinion on what that could actually be. So Elon Musk says X will launch payment services by mid 2024. And this all came from uh, Kathy Wood. Looks like she sat down with Elon Musk in the Twitter spaces. So speaking to ARK Invest, Kathy Wood on December 21st, X space, Musk said he expects payment services to be fully launched sometime by the middle of next year, pending the approval of several money transmitter license applications. Moving down, Tesla CEO has never confirmed this as far as crypto and appears to have put a further damper on crypto related enthusiasm, enthusiasm after revealing he spends hardly any time thinking about digital assets, which is pretty uh, telling because not too long ago, he was uh, pumping Dogecoin for quite some time. However, Tesla still holds some or roughly 148 million in Bitcoin on its balance sheet. And then as a reminder, reports in 2022 all suggest that Musk's tunnel construction from the boring company had begun allowing customers to pay for rides on its Las Vegas transit system using Dogecoin. So before we you know, jump to conclusions, this was last year, July 7th, 2022. And really what he was, he was alluding to the fact. It wasn't like he was saying, yeah, we're gonna take Dogecoin. But someone just asked like, hey, how can you incorporate Dogecoin as much as possible? And Elon said, hey, I'm supporting Doge whenever, wherever and whenever possible. Does that mean that's going to be the uh, end all be all as far as for uh, the actual payment system? It's anybody's guess. But I will say it is telling that he has two logos in his Twitter profile or X profile. One is the X logo. The second one is the Dogecoin logo. So if he picks Dogecoin, I wouldn't be too surprised. Maybe he picks Bitcoin and the Lightning Network. Maybe he picks XRP. Maybe he picks Bonk. Maybe he picks tomato coin. I have no idea. But I will say, I don't expect him to do something like with just straight up fiat cash, and this is why. Musk explained that he imagines money and digital assets as a database for resource allocation, adding that fiat, fiat currency is actually fine, so long as state actors don't try to debase the currency by manipulating its supply. I don't know how long you've been on the show or on the channel itself and watch me, but you know by now that I agree with the fact that the federal government does manipulate the supply and that's called money printing. And that's why when we take a look at Bitcoin and different digital assets that are out there, if we can see that there is a massive inflation rate going on, it's because the money printer goes on. So if he's saying that fiat is fine, as long as it's not the basement, that's a green light for crypto. Anyhow, let me know what you think about that in the comments section and also Ethereum. Now, as we've gone forward in this cycle, it seems like Ethereum has kind of fallen off and really hasn't done a whole heck of a lot. It has appreciated, but as a reminder, it's not so much about a winner take all type of thing. I know some people will say like, ah, but Rob, Solana is blowing up and it'll, it'll just keep going up forever. And it'll be just a winner take all and it'll be a black hole and it'll be absorbed to everything. And I just remind everybody, just look back into everything as far as like digital. Remember social media platforms? I remember there was one called Friendster and that was the big thing and everybody went into that. And it was MySpace and you had to be on MySpace. And then of course it became Facebook and everybody had to be on Facebook. Then all of a sudden Facebook fell out of favor and all of a sudden you had Instagram, which Facebook actually bought up. And that's the reason why it's still pretty much relevant today because it buys up those types of properties. Then of course we get X and then we get TikTok and a whole different host of things. So for us just to take, take a look and say, there's only one thing and one thing to win only, I don't think that's really the case. I think there's use cases for a lot of different things. And if you believe it's gonna be great for you, so much the better. Me personally, uh, if you watch my video, I own a ton of different crypto and I diversify. But for me personally, I think Ethereum might do just fine. Here's why. Ethereum emerges as a key blockchain for tokenized real world assets. This is from uh, Cristiano Venturcelli, nailed it, of Moody's. Moody's is a credit ratings for global markets. And here's what they talk about. And they say blockchain could lessen the need for intermediaries or the middleman in the issuance process, thereby improving operational efficiency and potentially reducing costs. All of really just saying is like, there's too much paperwork, so many people taking the cuts. If you eliminate the middleman, you can have cost savings and thereby greater revenue. Distributed ledger technology also underlies tokenization of real world assets or RWAs, which could increase accessibility of certain instruments. Imagine all the people that don't have banks. 
They, they are unbanked there throughout the world, and they would like assets to certain different uh, aspects or assets, whether those could be, that could be uh, equities, traditional equities, that could be land, that could be real estate. Of course, that could be also digital assets. You know, on the bank, it's very difficult, but guess what? Almost everybody, and I don't care if you're in a third world country, has a smartphone, but they got a heck of a lot more reach and a lot more people if you have that. And what can you do with a smartphone? You can create a crypto wallet. Large institutions such as the European Investment Bank have issued bonds on Ethereum, which was also the blockchain relying on digital green bonds, Moody's rate in 2023, which is a 10 million, this is in euros, senior unsecured digital green bond issued by Societe Generale. Nailed it. So that's good as far as like real world assets. People are using Ethereum. It sounds like it's a great thing. Total value of tokenized real world assets on public blockchains increased to 2 billion from 1 billion in the last 12 months. And Ethereum currently hosts the vast majority of it. And the question that you probably have is why do they use Ethereum? Why? Because we've seen, I mean, if you've seen, if you use the Ethereum layer one solutions, just how high the actual gas fees are. But the thing you have to remember is this, how many of these different chains have the liquidity? How, how many different chains actually have the ability to do these things and are able to function and are trusted and are battle tested? There's a big difference between somebody like us who are like, I'd like an NFT of a goat or whatever it is. And I don't wanna pay $23 as opposed to somebody who's like, I wanna buy that skyscraper for $10 billion as far as a real world asset. I wanna tokenize that. And I want it to fail because I wanna lose millions of dollars they're okay with paying a couple hundred bucks in gas fees. So there's a big difference, I think, in those people. To finish up, one factor selling adoption of tokenization is a lack of a reliable form of digital cash, which has led market participants to settle transactions off chain or use stable coins. So again, don't fade Ethereum yet. I think there's a little bit more uh, action left in the bag, but we will see. And of course, talking about real world assets, I remember this, AVAX, partnered up with JP Morgan about a month ago. This is in November 16, 2023. I thought it was interesting how they did that. And it kind of reminded me of like, well, we're talking about real world assets, why don't they just jump over to AVAX? That's what JP Morgan is using. However, check this out. JP Morgan Apollo Global demonstrated a proof of concept using Avalanche blockchain. The proof of concept connects JP Morgan's Onyx digital assets to tokenized funds on Avalanche. Before you're like, wow, JP Morgan's, they must be really benevolent and very super nice. But remember, that is a permission chain. And then scrolling down, I didn't really know this, but Avalanche put this out and they said, yeah, we're partnering with JP Morgan, da, da, da. Leveraging layer zero labs to connect with Onyx, the permission chain, with a permissioned Avalanche Evergreen subnet, which facilitates subscription. So I have to tell you, if you take a look at uh, Avalanche and you think, well, it's doing pretty good, I will remind you about a week ago because of inscriptions, which are essentially... NFTs on the blockchain, Bitcoin has that issue right now with inscriptions. Some people hate it uh, or ordinals. Some people love it. Doesn't really matter to me. Price goes up. But if you take a look at daily transactions, what I'm looking at, first of all, I own all this stuff. I own Polygon, Arbitrum, Cardano, Ethereum, Polygon again, Optimism, BNB. I don't own Aptos. Near Solana, I don't own Base. No one owns Base. Bitcoin, Avalanche, and Sweet. I own them all. So don't tell me, why, why, why did you only show us a couple? Because I'm just it'll make sense in a second. Here's the daily transactions. These are one of the highest. You can see in, that in green is Solana. And Solana's got 25, 22, 23 million as far as transactions. The next one of most recent is Avalanche at 5.86 million. Again, they pumped up massively because of the transcriptions or inscriptions, ordinals. Near protocol is 5 million, same thing. And Ethereum only has 1.24 million transactions. But I wanna, want you to notice something. If you take a look at the daily transactions and we come down here to revenue, and you can find all this information on at app.artemis.xyz, links in the description. When, the, when you have a lot of transactions, usually your revenue goes up and should be pretty high. But we can just see that actually Ethereum up here had the lowest transactions and it has the highest fees. And the next one above that, or excuse me, below that was Avalanche. It's funny to me, the two that had the least amount of transactions have the highest revenue. Why is that? It's because the price went up exponentially. And I will just draw your attention to a couple of things, Solana and Near. That revenues stayed relatively the same, except for here, Near's went up to 100,000, which wasn't too much. Then over here, 
You've got Solana, the revenue is 145,000. Near is only 16,000. Ethereum and Avalanche are in the millions, almost four and a half, and Ethereum's at 10 million. That's a lot of revenue for not, honestly, a lot of daily transactions. And before anybody says, but Rob, Solana, I don't think that's true because all those 25 million, that's, there's a difference between voting and not voting. And also there's a problem with their failed transactions. I don't think that's true. There's another website I'm gonna direct you to, analytics.soulscan.io. And what it shows you is transactions per second and success rate. See this purple line right here? This is the success rate for Solana. And you're ruffling around 99.8%. Not too bad, 99.75, not perfect, but who is? Or what is? That's over seven days, but let's back up. What about a month? Still around the 99s. What if we take that out to three months? All right, now we're talking. And there was a little bit of a problem down here, success rate down to 95, 89%. How about all time? And we can see that that beforehand, there was a lot of problems with Solana. They shored up that issue, they fixed it, they patched it, and now look at their success rate. I gotta tell you, I've been using those DEXs now for like the last month and a half, haven't had a problem whatsoever. And then people will say, but Rob, what about the different transactions as far as voting versus non-vote transactions? You can find it right here in the very middle. Over, Let's just break this down. Let's take over three months. See in purple? Those are the vote transactions. And if you take a look at that, that's 367 million on, on October 28th. Hell, let's just go all the way over here. December, December, 9, December 20th, vote transactions was 179 million. Non-vote transactions, 26 million. So you're looking at 205 million transactions on a layer one chain and the revenue itself is that low? That's something. And then moving forward, Argentina just had a new president, Javier Malay, is giving an early nod to Bitcoin. Some crypto can now be using contracts. And I gotta tell you, it's a, it's a pretty good thing. That means that they're implementing it in a very large country. Now, Argentina is, I believe, it was the third largest GDP in South America with 487 billion. And it dwarfs El Salvador of only 28 billion. So if Bitcoin made a huge splash in El Salvador and what that means for all the countries surrounding it, Imagine what's gonna happen with Argentina. And actually, uh, to be true to his word, the new president of Argentina came out and did a press release. And it was a great testament to not only Bitcoin, but how you can change around a country by thoughts and ideas and moving away from the central banks and socialism. I'm gonna link this in the description. You can listen to it. There is subtitles unless you speak Spanish. And it's just fantastic five minutes of pretty much the new president just ripping into everybody that screwed up his country. Anyhow, let me tell you anything about that. And then also, speaking of countries, Hong Kong, ready to accept uh, spot crypto ETF applications. A lot of people were reporting that this was just Bitcoin only, but here's what was actually said. In addition to existing crypto futures ETFs, the SFC, which is the Securities and Futures Commission in Hong Kong, said it is prepared to accept applications for the authorization of other funds with exposure to virtual assets, including virtual asset spot exchange traded funds or VA spot ETS, Fs. Both in-kind and in-cash subscription and redemptions are allowed for SFC authorization, authorized spot VA ETFs. So what they're saying is that, of course, what the SEC wants, wants the Americans to do is to do a spot ETF, but only in cash and not in kind, meaning that everybody who signs up for the clients, they're gonna have to actually pay in cash and get paid in cash. However, they are gonna have to hold Bitcoin. But of course, for the SFC here in Hong Kong, they're gonna say, look, you can do in cash, you can do in crypto, we really don't care, but we want you to run it through us and we wanna get paid for doing that and that's fine. I will just make a distinction that Hong Kong is not necessarily China. They said, they, they say it is, one country with two systems. So Hong Kong is kind of like the proving ground before it kind of spreads out to the rest of mainland China. But we'll see how it actually goes. And of course, all this great news, but people will say, but Rob, what about the macro? Well, good news on that too. Fed's favorite inflation gauge shows that prices rose at 3.2%, which is less than expected. And for the TLTR, this is what it is. This is why I like uh, CNBC to kind of just uh, lay it out there. 
The core personal consumption expenditures price index rose just 0.1% in November. It was up 3.2% from a year ago, which were close to expectations. On a six-month basis, though, core PCE was up 1.9%, which is below the Fed's 12-month target rate. That would be below what they wanted to have, which is 2%, when we're going in the right direction. This is including food and energy costs, so-called headline PCE actually fell 0.1% a month and was up just 2.6% from a year ago. I'm not going to bore you with the rest of the details, but look, inflation is going the right way. This could be a monster next 2024 and beyond. And then lastly, to finish up, um, MELD. MELD is uh, essentially a DeFi bank built on kind of Cardano and Avalanche, but uh, all the nodes are currently full, 100 million MELD staked in uh, 30 minutes. That is a good news for us. And when I say us, you have to understand that when I talk about things this channel, I obviously own them. I'm not doing this because of the charity of my own heart. I do this because I own these things. So when you say is Rob biased, Rob is extremely biased. So MELD, just might something you want to take a look at. It's only two cents. And the max supply is 4 billion, total supply is 4 billion, circulating supply is 3.6. Roughly, they got everything else out there. And the market cap itself, as of today, is below 100 million. It's only $92 million. And I uh, just went up uh, just a little 6%. So maybe something to look at. If you want to learn more about MELD and what it's all about for the DeFi bank, I did an interview with Ken Oling and also... Uh, with their CTO. And I can just tell you, here's a little taste of what you're going to get. Just take a listen to this. And then here's the last question then. Ken, I don't believe you. Yeah. So here's the thing. I've had a lot of people on the show and they tell me great stuff and then they've been lying to me. How can we verify this? So yeah, you can check out that video in the uh, description and uh, check out what Mel's all about, what me and Ken, the CEO, talked about. And then finally, finally, Benjamin Annis. So we had talked about this three or four days ago. The goal of this channel is to find new narratives. And this isn't a new narrative. I've been talking about this for like over six months now. And I believe that for the next bull run, it's going to be at least three things. One is going to be AI. Next one's going to be DEXs. And the third will be Web3 Gaming. And to bring everybody over, because I'm not a big gamer, but and a, and a lot of these games take a substantial amount of time and understanding to get into. And of course, different uh, setups and gaming rigs. And if you don't have, like I have a Mac, some people don't have Macs, they need a PC, but everybody's got a phone. And I like casual gaming because it's super easy. So I introduced everybody to Benji Bananas a couple of days ago. Super simple game. It was, it's been out since 2013. It was a web two game, had over 50 million downloads. And now they're coming into web three. I like playing it as far as like I'm killing time because I figure why not? I don't want to keep, scrolling on Twitter all day long. So every so often I'll work the brain and just play this little goofy game. So we're gonna do a giveaway. And I said the first, on the first video, I said, very simple, just go to this website in the bottom left-hand corner. There's the uh, links for to download the app store and the Google store. Just put it into your phone and start playing. It's just a one-click playing. Now let's go to the second part, very simple. When you open up the game itself on the left-hand side, you're gonna see this sign in with Apple. My, I have an iPhone, you might have a Google Android phone, whatever it is click on that button and then sign up. Once you sign up, it's gonna bring you back to the game itself. And I want you to click over here on the right lower side, it says more info. Once you click on that, it's gonna take you to the Benji Bananas website and see right there it says sign in, sign up in orange. You're gonna click on that and you're going to click on either sign in with Apple or Google, whatever else you did. And it's gonna automatically take you to the next screen, which is gonna say, great, you're signed in. It's gonna give you a game ID. All I want you to do is copy that. There's a link in the description for this tweet. And I want you just to put your game ID in there. And that game ID, we're gonna randomly draw from Twitter and we're gonna give you away passes. And those passes are gonna allow you to, the first of all, Benji Bananas is free to play. It's 100% free to play, it's super simple to play, very simple, very easy. But the pass itself is gonna allow you to play the game and earn the token. And what I'm gonna do is we're gonna do a drawing in a couple of days. All you need is your game ID, put in the tweet, and that'll be that. So look, that's it for today. Now it's a bit long, a lot of information going on. If you like today's video, give it a thumbs up. Consider subscribing. Everything we talk about is time sensitive. But that's it for today. Thank you so much for stopping by. I do appreciate it. And I'll see you on the next one. A lot of fucking editing.